Hey everybody. So Julia Lotkev is a filmmaker who last made the festival circuit rounds with a movie called Day Night, Day Night. Really interesting kind of minimalist study of a woman who had a bomb strapped to her chest while walking around Times Square. And her new movie, The Loneliest Planet, which is uh, just pr premiering at Toronto uh, this week, uh, is sort of different territory. It's about a relationship and two people traveling through the Georgian mountains and you, you, you kind of watch them walk around and wonder what the subtext is and, and whether or not they're going to fight and all these different kinds of things. So on the surface, it's a very different kind of project, but actually it has certain uh, thematic similarities and other things that are consistent uh, with her work. So we're going to talk about that, and we're also uh, very happy to have the two actors who play the couple in the film. So please join me in welcoming Julia Lotkiv and the actress Gal Garcia Bernal and Hanin Furstenberg. Do we have a third microphone? Great. So, Julia, there's a microphone for you here. Um, day Night, Day Night is about a woman walking around with a backpack. And The Loneliest Planet is about two people walking around with backpacks. Three. <laughs> Three. Three. So I'm starting to see a motif here. Yeah. Uh, but, but seriously, uh, the, the, it's, it's interesting because the last film was very much a sort of minimalist experiment about one person, and here it does seem like you're in different ground working with the relationship story. So can you tell us a little bit about you know, what the transition was like going from that last project to this one? Well, exactly. I think yeah, Day Night, Day Night was about a girl's relationship with her own faith. So for me, it was very exciting to work with the actors about a film about a people's relationship with each other, which was kind of a thrilling new thing for me, really. So, uh, Hani, you've done a lot of stuff in the Israeli theater and, and some Israeli cinema as well. You've worked with some big Israeli directors like Eitan Fox. Um, like Joseph Cedar, who's here with Footnote. Like Joseph Cedar, who's here with Footnote. Nice plug. Um, this is obviously very different as well. I mean, it's, it's not, ju not just, you know, nationally, obviously, but just in terms of the kind of project it is, I mean, it's not a traditional narrative, it's much more experimental, so what, what interested you about getting involved in something like this, given how different it is from what you've done before? I think that what, I mean, get, getting a script that's, you know, has hardly any text in it is just like telling me a story, um, and the story that it told, the subtleness of it, the subtlety of it, um, really drew me in. And the fact that it was going to be filmed in such an amazing place and that we were going to be, you know, going through this journey for these two months together, the whole thing just really, it was an experience that I would never have passed up. Yeah. So you guys were basically just out in the woods. You're out in, out in the mountains, Well, not in right? the woods, in the, but yeah, in the there mountains. There were no trees. <laughs> in the mountains. With, with a tiny yeah. crew and... and Sometimes uh, sleeping in tents and, you know, waking up at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, hiking for two hours to get to a place where we're going to start our hike that's going to be filmed. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a very intense experience. So, Gail, I mean, I'm sure this is exactly like all the larger projects you've done before, right? Just tents and, and mountains. And that's yeah, it, right? <laughs> tents and, uh, well, I, I'm not used to large projects uh, as well. I mean, I, I, they're not uh, so big where I come from. And, and some of the films um, are pretty small in scale. But this one in particular, uh, thanks to the, the design of, of the adventure that, uh, that, uh, that Julia wanted us to, to experience and to portray, uh, it was necessary that it was a very intimate um, very few people working on the movie, even though we were a lot, I well must say, but everyone into the same kind of uh, trekking, you know? We were like doing, <laughs> sometimes we, we would camp out, which was fantastic. I mean, it was a great experience to be there up in the mountains and, uh, and doing it for real. Um, but uh, I, I think that, that, uh, that, uh, that there is no trick to it. Uh, we were hiking every day like we would go and walk for uh, i don't know half an hour to reach the location right i mean sometimes yeah. or even more no, sometimes, sometimes an sometimes hour and a half and hike. sometimes even more and we would just do it and and everyone would help out with all the 
bags and stuff that uh, that was needed, and uh, we would just go up, up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, all the way up to the glacier. Sometimes, no, it was, that was fantastic when we went yeah. there. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So originally you were going to do this in China, is that right? Or, or at some point you were going to do it in China? We, originally I had wanted to do it in Georgia, and then there was a brief period with financing where we tried to move it to China, and in the end we ended up where it should have been, which is Georgia. So, so what was it about the, the way that this landscape works in the film that was especially interesting to you? Because it is a film where in some ways the environment is as much a character as these two people right here. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anywhere like this, that these kind of mountains, they were so huge, um, but they were also incredibly lush and green. It wasn't rocky, it wasn't brutal, it was like almost like velvet. I always say it's like if you imagine a golf course that exploded on some mountains, but also with these kind of weird orange minerals. So it had almost like a science fiction-like quality to it while being also very gentle, and that was quite important for me, that it's not set in an arid kind of violent landscape. Um, and, and also the other thing that's interesting about it is that there are just very long stretches of time where we watch these people walk and walk, and then something happens, and it sort of changes their behavior and the way that they communicate. And so that brings up the inevitable, inevitable question of improvisation and just how invested you had to be in these characters in order to live in them for so long in, you know, and make that sort of patient pacing strategy work. Can, can you guys talk about it, how, that, how that worked out for you? Yeah, uh, well, I think that the key point in all this is that, that Julia managed to, to create a very good question from the beginning. It was a very interpretable <laughs> question. It was a very, uh, it was a very interesting uh, question where, where, I mean, this incident perhaps that you're talking about and that we don't want to perhaps... No spoilers. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sell out. Uh, uh, inverts everything, and they have to build a new language to relate to each other. They have to, to um, I mean, uh, uh, an event like that uh, shuffles priorities and shuffles a way of, of uh, almost a grammatic kind of understanding between each other. So not only, um, not only they have to to find a new language uh, physically, they have to find another language almost with this kind of metaphysical connection that they might have or that they thought they had or that they really have but it's becoming a new thing and uh, and so I think that that uh, that uh, this question was was so let's say strong and so uh, propositive that uh, we all felt that we could portray it uh, that we could do it uh, but obviously then it then then we reach the location and is how do we do this no <laughs> and it was like a normal kind of uh, uh, thing of uh, what happens in the film but but we had the question we had a good question I think and 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 that is um, that is a completely credit of Julia I mean we had a really good thing to hold on to and to grab on to well, the other thing is that this is a movie that I think makes a considerable effort to to root itself in the real world. And there are early scenes that are essentially like a documentary in a way where you have people who aren't actors, who, aren't, who are just playing themselves, and you, you two are interacting with them. So Julia, can you, can you tell me a little bit about that strategy and, and where you were coming from in, in trying to create that, that uh, atmosphere from the beginning? For me, I'm always really interested in the way that, you know, the lines where fiction and documentary bleed into each other. I mean, obviously, I think there's elements of fiction in every documentary, and whenever you shoot a person, you're shooting a real person with real kind of with a real face who's breathing in a real location. So there's inevitably some element of documentary that enters into things. And in this case, I wanted to take this very precisely kind of um, defined narrative story, but to bring it into this real world where suddenly the real world could enter, and there were unpredictable elements to that. So for instance, you know, we were staying in a village and um, the earlier scenes were filmed by, you know, having Hani and Gael as the couple enter into these situations that they would enter into as travelers. And maybe you guys can talk a little more about that. Well, about kind of. Well, I mean, it, with what, what was that like? You know, I mean, it. Just work, I mean, when when you're when you're in a real environment and being told yeah. to act, 
Well, it's, it's uh, it wasn't. We weren't being told to act. We were <laughs> being told not to act. Um, <laughs> we were. I mean, we were just living in the circumstances and enjoying the playfulness of it. And um, well, that's acting as well. Yeah, I mean, and it's, uh, it's ambiguity, yeah, true. And um, it's creating yeah, a situation I mean, and you know. seeing what happens in it and behaving truthfully. It was it. yeah, it was very um, authentic. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, the the Bizina who plays that. I mean, he would argue strongly against like, no, I didn't play myself. Yeah, you know, even though he's very used to to I being the mountain and everything. This is a, the third character in the film. Is it's a guide that the two of you recruit, yeah. and he was actually a guide, or he had worked as a guide in the area, right? No, he's a prof He's the top mountaineer in Georgia. He actually yeah, in the film he plays a trekking guide, um, which um, I mean, Bidzina himself is like climbed Everest twice, climbed a few 8,000 meter peaks, and is a professional mountaineer. So they call what we did in the film kind of going on the green stuff, basically going for a stroll. Um, but yes, as Gael pointed out, like he would definitely say, no, 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 I am not playing myself. I mean, for example, people have asked me, there's a story that he tells at the end, and uh, people have asked me, well, that's his story, of course, that's his own story, and I'm like, no, 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 he's happily married with four children. Um, that's not his story. <laughs> Well, but it, what, what's uh, unique about the introduction of that character and the way that you guys interact with him is that it is sort of a movie about cultural boundaries on some level. Uh, again, not to give too much away, but, but there is a certain point where y you're being forced to question, you know, how much these outsiders are assuming about their environment and, and what the environment can do to them and how it changes them, not only personally, but on the outside. So. Uh, you know, how do you feel about that sort of thing? Because Day Night, Day Night was also to some degree about cultural assumptions, you know, having a woman with a bomb strapped to her chest but not knowing her nationality and, and seeing how that plays off a viewer's assumption. Whereas here we have a specific nationality but few details and a lot also left up to the imagination. Well, I think for me it was important in this film not to kind of fall into the tropes of travel films which are quite condescending to travelers usually. I wanted to depict the kind of travelers that I'd met backpacking in different parts of the world who are actually attempting, at least, you know, they are very honestly attempting to be as open as possible, to be as respectful as possible, to learn a little bit, not to just kind of go and have fun in a place. But, of course, other things enter into that. Right. Yeah, uh, I mean, just, uh, there is a... Um, well, I had something to say, but I was <laughs> completely... I was just watching the cafe, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was I was about to say something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> your We're character. So tired. <laughs> there, there is a connection to you oh, here because your oh. character is from another country. Yeah. Uh, this In is what I wanted country. to say. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. This is a, the token. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I think I, I agree completely and support, uh, and and I think we are the majority in the world that think uh, like Julia does as well that. You know, I don't give an issue with nationality at all. It's not in play in the game, in the film, you know? It's not, uh, we don't know, explain where we're from. Uh, there's no need to explain it because it's assumed that these people can be together. There's no reason why, why to show, to go back and say like, okay, well, he traveled from Cuba or from yeah. Mexico or from wherever he was and there. He met this girl that is, you know, there's no need to, to explain that because it's pretty plausible, I mean, nowadays. Not even, not even um, in fiction, but in reality, we were a bunch of people from all over the world working in a film that, you know, films are done pretty much the same way everywhere, in a sense. I mean, uh, and, and this I'm speaking in a broad sense, you know? But we, we are all in touch with more things in common that, uh, that, that separate us. And, uh, and we were in, some of us, uh, I was in the complete antipodes of where I come from, it was the other side of the world, and um, and and I felt very close to this place, incredibly close, and, and realizing how far away we were, but we were we fell in love with everybody there. The people are fantastic, really beautiful people, easygoing, and and um, and also they have a what was what's really helpful in these situations is when people have a filmic. Uh, when, when, where, where you're at, they have a filmic uh, history, no? Because then, then 
okay, let's play a game, let's shoot a movie. They know, they, they know, they've seen movies, of course, and, and they know how, to, how, it's, how it is, you know? And this is really helpful because you can fall into the game really easy. I mean, Julia just had to say a couple of things and the game would be done, you know? Like, <laughs> people would, the, the, the game would start, you know? Just by way of transition, you're an actor who's achieved a certain amount of name recognition, and yet a lot of times when people have success, they get locked into a certain category or a certain part of the world, like they just have to work in Hollywood or they just have to work on whatever their national cinema is, and yet you've managed to kind of work in these different parts of the world in different languages and so forth, and it doesn't seem to really work against you. So can, can you talk a little bit about how you manage to find that kind of balance in the decisions you make? Ah, uh, well, uh, thank you for that. I mean, I, I, I hardly think about uh, the industrial um, consequences in that sense. Uh, I, I really uh, decide projects on a very personal kind of necessity, and, uh, and sometimes that personal necessity is, is uh, pretty frivolous, perhaps, like having to earn money to <laughs> sustain my kids, or, or sometimes, uh, well, it's not so frivolous, actually. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. Come on, yeah. No, but, the, but sometimes it goes into another kind of, uh, 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 I don't know, reasoning. For example, with, in Julia's project, it was just the whole, uh, the whole let's say, the, the bet that she was putting on. And she raised the bet, and she raised the bet. And it was, wow, a great project to, to, to fall into and to, and to mingle and to try to, I mean, like a challenge, you know, a beautiful challenge. And I have to be very thankful with Julia for calling me to, yeah. to, to participate in this because uh, it's not very common. And, and nowadays it's more difficult to do projects like this. I mean, it's becoming more and more and more complicated. I mean, this project took a long time for it to, to sort of, Actually yeah, for it to be realized. So, uh, so I just, uh, the best explanation I have of, of uh, what I would like to, to achieve is to be as free as possible and to do what I want um, and wherever I want and can, uh, I, wanna, if I wanna go there. So if anyone has a script from Sri Lanka right now, yeah. maybe, uh, maybe it, immediately I would raise my, my attention, so yeah. And Hani, now that we've seen you in one American film, might there be more to come? Maybe. <laughs> Is that I, mean? I would. I mean, I would also love. I mean, th we're in this profession for the love of it, for the love of the art of it. I'm in the profession for the love of the art of it, and um, I've had the opportunity to work with amazing people in Israel, mostly, and now with Julia here. And uh, if I was able to just keep working with amazing people around the world, that would be everything that I could ask for. Yeah. And we'll, we'll go to questions in a second, but Julia. Uh, I think, you know, it's not necessarily a put down to say these are difficult films to market, difficult films to, se to sell, the kind of movies that you make. In fact, it might even be a compliment, um, but it does take a while to get them made. It took you a while b between day night, day night, and this one. So uh, how, do, how do you feel about that kind of situation? You know, I mean, do, do you ever think maybe it's, is, is, it worth, is it worth the wait? Is it worth it? Uh, <laughs> do I have a choice? I don't know, but you just do, you know. <laughs> you just do the work. I mean, I mean, this, I mean in, in so far as where, where you're headed professionally, I mean, do, do you have a certain kind of interest in, in what kind of films you want to continue to make, or is it just sort of project by project? It is project by project, but I think, you know, I've never, I kind of resigned myself to the fact that I probably will never make a film that everybody likes or that people feel kind of evenly about and kind of everyone likes it a little bit. But I kind of prefer to make work that either people, people really love it or some people should hate work. Hmm. I really believe that. I think if nobody hates it, there's something really wrong with it. Right. Okay, so let's take some questions if we have any. Any questions for these guys? Well, I have some more questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, First of all, uh, can you guys tell us what, what you're working on right now? I, I'm sure that there must be something 
What, what, what's your next project? I just left the theater in Israel after being there for four and a half years with um, at least 30 performances a month. And so I'm very happy to take a short break <laughs> from that. And you just won an award, right? Yeah, for, for, for the last play that I did. I played a ventriloquist doll that somebody... Yeah, you have to see pictures. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you saw the pictures. Okay, oh, yeah, that's right. Anyway, that's... Yeah. Yes, I won for it, yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, so I'm taking a, I, I took a break off that and came back to the States just about three months ago, and yeah, now we'll see what will be in my future. I, um, uh, well, uh, last night was the premiere here of a film that we produced called Misbala, uh, and uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, and. Um, and so, uh, sorry, we, there's a few things happening in, in the producing a little bit, uh, but uh, I'm going to act in a film in, in Chile uh, that's happening in uh, uh, somewhere around yeah, the end of the year. Uh, we're going to do this film <laughs> with uh, Pablo Larraín, uh, the director that of Tony Manero and, uh, and Post Mortem. And that's going to be very interesting. Dark I, I stuff, so. right. Yeah, and 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 then uh, and then I don't know. I mean, there's plans and there's there's projects um, all over the place, but I have no idea, no idea. I wish I knew a little bit more so I could plan my holiday. Even, but <laughs> yeah. How about yourself? What's that expression? If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Toronto is uh, this film festival is certainly a place to feel busy. Uh, are, do you guys uh, get along well with the kind of rush of publicity and promotion that's involved in getting the movie out there, or is it, is it? Like it was the a nice. It was a nice opportunity to yeah. get to see Gael again, and get to see <laughs> Julia again. I mean, Julia's with me in New York, but <laughs> Gael I don't get to see a lot. So yeah, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> but also, it's uh, uh, many things have changed <laughs> for a while. I mean, I, I mean, there is this new cinema that is fantastic. I just went there today. It's quite incredible, it's quite an amazing uh, building. And the, the, I mean, it's, I, I haven't been inside though. I haven't seen a film there, but it looks incredible. Uh, but uh, but also the 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 whole perception, perhaps, and and let's say the the more industrial sense has changed a lot. You know, I mean, it operates now on in different ways, what's happening in film, in the, let's say, the English-speaking world, uh, world and in other parts. And, uh, and so, I don't know, it's, uh, it's ever-evolving. And, and, um, and, I mean, of course, I was thinking 10 years ago. Now, uh, before it used to be, I remember it was kind of a novelty to, for, for a Mexican film to come to the festival and to make some kind of repercussion, you know? And, and now it's a bit more kind of expected and, uh, and a little bit more natural. There is not such big issues, which is good in a way, because at the same time it creates a more level kind of uh, films are films, you know? <laughs> There's not such thing as a, as a foreign film. I mean, because I, I, I get asked all the time if, uh, what is it like to do foreign films? And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> They're not film? foreign to you, yeah. right? Well, yeah, I mean, and, and I don't know. I've never went to see a... F when I was a kid, I never went to see a foreign film. I went to see a film, you know? I, it wasn't like, <laughs> let's make an effort and watch a foreign film. It was just films. And, um, and so, so I think that this kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of m m getting more into a... We're all in the same, in the same um, mud. <laughs> and... Uh, and it is, <laughs> it is nice that we're all there in the same mud. mud. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely metaphor. Yeah. Do we have any other any questions out here, anybody? Last chance. No, nothing? All right, well, we're out of time we anyway, so. Uh, Thanks, guys. Oh, good. wait. One question uh, from Brian. Well, now right, you have to ask it. We haven't had our it. first public screening. <laughs> I tried to describe it a lot for them. Okay, yes, okay, very briefly story of uh, Ambulante, okay. The Phoenicians came to... No. <laughs> no, okay, so there's this film festival that we have, that uh, this is one of the projects that we're going around. There's this film festival that is a documentary, a traveling documentary film festival that goes around Mexico in 16 cities. 
and there's like around uh, 80 films that uh, are screened in commercial screens and also outside in in, um, in the plazas and in uh, cultural spaces and in uh, just wherever we can. And uh, it's the seventh year. Next year, it's growing exponentially, quite strongly. Uh, we actually the, the the film festival won an award in in Washington. They're giving it to us on the 13th. It's this uh, human rights award um, that uh, WALA, the Washington Office of Latin America, gives uh, because uh, because it is one of the best festivals that exists uh, because it is taking the documentaries to for everyone to get a chance to see a documentary and not in a film festival or not in a in a cultural center or you know it, it, it we try to spread the word around and the, and whoever is interested in documentaries well now after 7 years of doing this festival there is a there is a big audience people know people are very uh, well uh, yeah uh, very well how to say like versed into the documentary film language in mexico and uh, and you'll be surprised. And please, I invite you all to Ambulante because it is a very, it's one of the best experiences to be in Oaxaca in the middle of the night and watch these amazing documentaries screened in the cathedral there. And you're just like, it's for free and, the, and people go crazy and the, the mezcal does everything and it's just incredible. <laughs> so please come, please come and it's a, it's a great thing. Thank you, thank you for asking that. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we'll see you in Oaxaca. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you.